Let's say, so you ever use like DOS back in the 80s? Sure. Right? On your computer? Okay. C, C colon, right. DIR, right. all that stuff, right? Okay. Let's say that Microsoft produced DOS and hadn't touched it since 1983. Now, it's been installed on billions of computers and there's been billions of copies made and all of that. Let's say that not a single engineer touched it since. And that as the years went on, it added Windows. It added the capability for a mouse. It added new languages. It added a web browser. It added an email client. It added Word. It added PowerPoint. It added virus protection. It added network capabilities. Let's say that all those improvements happened purely from DOS's ability to rewrite itself. Programmed into the original DOS. Yes. Somehow. Yes. Let's say that programmed into the original DOS was, was an ability it's like to say, hey, I'm installed in this computer. I need to adapt to this environment. Oh, there's this new piece of hardware that got plugged in. I need to talk to it. OK. Is there a question in there? Because I, yes. I, I have a response. Well, <laughs> if, if. It's detectable, right? Yeah. Well, if, if OK, hang on. Just OK. <laughs> if what? Microsoft DOS from 1983 had evolved into Windows Vista all by itself, would you be pretty impressed with the guy that wrote DOS? Yes, I would be. Yes, we would be fabulously impressed. Mm -hmm. Is it more, would it be more impressive if he did that than if you had to have 30,000 engineers doing updates and patches? Actually, and, yes. <laughs> yes, it would be much far more impressive. Far more impressive. Yeah. Okay, which is to say, if evolution is true, then God is much greater than the creationists ever gave him credit for being. Mm -hmm. Because evolution will never happen from random noise. 